out here. If you'd like to leave a message after the tone, then I'll ring you back. Uh, hello, Jan. It's Jan. No message. <laughs> Abby, we're home. Abby! <sighs> now look what you've done. Just when I'd managed to get him to sleep. Sorry? Where's Abby? She's out. She won't be back till late. Why? What happened? She's dining with a publisher. He wants to discuss a commission with her. Well, that's a bit of a waste of time, isn't it? I mean, she's been turning work away. Not anymore. It's a splendid idea of yours, Gerald, that she should have a nanny. Coming, my darling. I'm coming, Thomas. I'm so sorry. I'm afraid I haven't had time to cook your dinner. Dining on your own? Yes, that's right, Ken. On my own. Mind if I join you? Actually, I would rather you didn't. Jan, there was more to that James Brooke business than you knew about. I behaved badly. You behaved appallingly. And I really don't want to discuss it, all right? Yes, I'm sorry. But if there's any justice in this world, I think you'll agree I've had my comeuppance. Now, please, take pity on an ex-company director down to his last penthouse. You see, you almost smile, then. I'm doing you some good. I think I'll have the grilled place, please, and a bottle of Krug and two glasses. What are you celebrating? Or oh, dining with you, of course. Did you get my letter about Tom? Yes, yes, thanks, I did. It's a tragic loss. Tragic. Yes. <laughs> so, what have you been up to all this time? Oh, this and that, you know. If I tell you something, I want you to promise you won't dare breathe it to a living soul. I went into a retreat for a week. You? Yeah. Oh, I don't <laughs> believe it. That's perfectly true. Well, I, I say a week. I left after three days, deafened by the silence. But it did make me look into myself. And do you know I've hurt you a lot in the past. The one woman in the world I care most about. I can, please. Ah, oh, thank you. Believe me, it'll never happen again. Will you change the subject? Blackmail. That's what it is. Bloody blackmail. Don't be ridiculous, Jack. You're overreacting, as usual. Oh, am I? What do you call it, then? I mean, she dangles this boat in front of my nose and then says if I sell the yard, I don't get the contract. I mean, that's blackmail in any language. Dad, it's simply a statement of fact. Of course I want you to do the work. You're the obvious choice. But if you sell the yard to Charles Freer, you're not going to have a yard to work in, are you? She's a lovely boat, Jack. No, don't you start. Listen, I'll sell to Freer on the understanding that he delays completion for, say, nine months. How's that? This job could take well over a year. And if I know Charles, he'll want that site bulldozed flat by the end of the month. Yeah, but what I... My father went into that yard too, Jack. It's your image, Ken. Yes, definitely down market. I'm busy, Laura. What do you want? Ah, the Tarrant Boat Show. That's not just about your mark, I'd say. What's it to be next? Car boot sales? Don't mention the word boot. Might give me ideas. You wouldn't dare. Oh, don't tempt me, Laura. Don't tempt me. Well, really, I come here in a spirit of friendliness and all I get is abuse. Say what you've got to say and go. Well, the fact is, Ken, you rather worry me. Good. Better get used to the idea. I mean, here you are, down on your luck, still nursing this ridiculous idea that one day you regain control of leisure cruise. Oh, believe me, I will. It's a pipe dream, Ken. Not only do I control my holdings, but Vicky's as well. Yes, I heard she'd gone. They found the body yet? <laughs> oh, she's quite happy working for her uncle, Sir Alan. We parted the very best of friends. Been a novel experience for you, Laura? 
So, here we both are then. Me in full control of leisure crews, and you with virtually no liquid working capital to speak of. Oh, don't tell me you're going to offer to buy my shares. That's what I like about you, Ken. You're so perceptive. At what figure? Market price. Plus, say, five pence a share. Don't forget to charge the cost of this trip against the company. You won't get a better offer. Bye-bye, Laura. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I came across these. What are they? The plans and specifications for that little boat. I do hope you sell a lot of them. Oh, don't you worry. I will. <clears throat> well, we seem to have reached an impasse. However, I think I may have the right answer. Yeah, well, if you have, I'll be glad to hear it. Well, as I see it, you want to sell the mermaid yard, continue in boat building, and come out of the deal with uh, cash in hand. Oh. Sell to Relton Marine. You must be joking. The proposal is this. The mermaid yard, with you as its managing director, shall become a subsidiary of Relton Marine. In return, you get a block of Relton shares, a lump sum in cash and a seat on the board. And naturally, Vanessa would continue with the PR and advertising side of things. And your staff remains as is. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Let, let, let me take this on board. I carry on as before, only with a fancy name on my door, and I get paid a salary, right? Right. And on top of that, I get shares in Relton. Correct. Plus a bag of gold, Jack. Well, Dad. Uh, Thomas Leo. No, no, as a matter of fact, he's my grandson. Thank you very much, Headmaster. That's very kind of you. Now, tell me, how is the fund for the new science lab progressing? Really? Well, if that's all you need, I'll be happy to put a check in the post to you right away. Not at all. It's a pleasure. Goodbye. Oh, that's that settled. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, tell me, you are going to tell Abby and Leo? Of course. In time. I mean, sending their son to a school like that without it costing them a penny? What parent wouldn't be grateful? And after that, I suppose, a good degree and then a couple of years at the Harvard Business School. Do I detect a note of censure in your voice? No, it's just that you always resented your father running your life for you. It's strange how the pattern seems to be repeating itself. I just want what's best for the boy. I'm going for a swim. Well, thank God you have finally made up your mind. Yeah, with a bit of pushing and shoving. And a lot of shenanigans. How do you feel about it? Me? Fine. Avril's a clever girl. Clever? Devious, more like. Hey, Jack, hmm? what are we going to start working on the salad? Do? Got a little extra job <coughs> yeah, well, she's What's that? Down, what well, you doing there? I'd like you to be a liaison uh, be between back. Wilton and the uh, moment. Yeah. Liaison? Don't you mean troubleshooting? Well, keeping to delivery dates is not exactly my father's strongest yeah, point. I'm not sure that it's my scene. Well, so you're a major shareholder now. It's in your own interest. Think about it. But don't take too long. How does it feel, Jack? How do you mean, how does it feel? Not owning the yard anymore. Well, kind of empty, I suppose, after all these years. No, it's all gone. Jack, that's nonsense. The yard's still there and it's still in the family. You'd have felt a lot worse if you'd sold out to Charles Freer. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Don't know what Charlie's going to say when I tell him. Don't worry, Dad. I'll tell him for you. I'll be damned if I let Avril get away with this. Charles, I have put one hell of a lot of time and money into this marina project. I have no intention of letting all that effort go to waste. You do remember I had my doubts about Jack selling to us in the first place. Oh, well, thank you very much for that comforting thought. I was hoping for a more positive reaction from you. Well, in the face of such a fate accompli, I don't see what else we could have done. Don't you? Well, I damn well do. We take over Relton Marine. That way we automatically acquire the mermaid site. Well, look, Charles, this feud you have with Avril is rapidly getting out of control. It's clouding your judgment. Oh, no. I'm seeing things very clearly right now. Avril believes she's absolutely secure. That's the very time that we strike. 